The laser beams slice through the fog off Portsmouth like a silent warning to the world. The Royal Navy's Dragonfire system, long seen as an experimental concept, is now moving toward full operational status, marking a decisive shift in Britain's approach to naval warfare. In an age when missile swarms and drone saturation tactics threaten even the most advanced fleets, London has chosen to bet on directed energy weapons as the key to restoring its maritime edge. The Dragonfire program began in 2017 under the stewardship of the Defense Science and Technology Laboratory, developed jointly by MBDA UK, Leonardo UK, and Shinetti Q. At its core lies a 100 kilowatt solid state laser, stabilized by precision gimbals, guided by radar tracking and artificial intelligence assisted optics. It represents the convergence of photonics, sensors, and AI in a single combat platform. Initial plans envisioned small scale testing aboard Type 23 frigates, but the Ministry of Defense has since accelerated the schedule. Following successful trials in 2024 and 2025, Dragonfire is now set for live firing at sea by 2026 and full installation aboard Type 45 destroyers by 2027. The strategic logic is clear. Conventional air defense missiles, such as the Sea Viper or common anti-air modular missile, cost over one million pounds for every launch. In contrast, a laser shot from Dragonfire is estimated to consume only around 10 pounds worth of electrical energy. The economic asymmetry is staggering. Where the Royal Navy once risked exhausting its magazines repelling a wave of inexpensive drones or anti-ship missiles, it can now sustain defense as long as the ship's generators hold. This shift from chemical to electrical energy mirrors a broader transformation, deterrence through efficiency rather than sheer volume. Technologically, Dragonfire places the United Kingdom in an elite club. The United States has fielded its 60 kilowatt high energy laser weapon system aboard USS Portland, and China has unveiled several prototypes in the 40 to 80 kilowatt range. Britain, however, has leapt directly to the 100 kilowatt threshold, adopting a philosophy of precision over mass. The difference is not just in output power, but in integration. Dragonfire's design is modular and digital native, capable of linking with radar, combat management, and AI threat assessment in real time. The Royal Navy's adoption plan follows a two-phase approach. Between 2025 and 2027, the system will be installed on HMS Diamond and HMS Daring for sea trials. From 2028 to 2030, the Ministry of Defense intends to integrate the laser suite into new Type 26 and Type 31 frigates. Around 1,500 engineers in Leicester, Portsmouth, and Edinburgh are already involved in building the industrial base that will support the technology. The network of contractors, MBDA, Leonardo, Cinetti Q, creates a triangular ecosystem connecting British, Italian, and American defense industries. This structure hints at an emerging pillar within AUKUS, the trilateral alliance with Australia and the United States, focusing on high energy and electromagnetic technologies. The timing could not be more critical. Naval planners anticipate that future conflicts will be dominated by drone swarms, low-altitude cruise missiles, and hypersonic threats. Laser weapons offer an instant reaction defense layer between electronic warfare jamming and kinetic interceptors. In essence, 
The Royal Navy aims to construct a layered shield, long-range missile defense for the outer ring, laser neutralization for the middle ring, and electronic jamming for the inner ring. Dragonfire fits squarely in the center of this structure, where milliseconds determine survival. At the geopolitical level, the symbolism is unmistakable. China's People's Liberation Army Navy has been experimenting with ship-mounted lasers and even ground-based anti-satellite systems since 2023. By accelerating Dragonfire, Britain is sending a message that it will not be a passive observer in the Indo-Pacific balance of power. The weapon's eventual deployment on Royal Navy ships visiting the Indian Ocean and South China Sea underlines London's renewed global posture after Brexit. Global Britain expressed in beams of coherent light. Yet there are risks. Directed energy weapons remain highly sensitive to atmospheric conditions. The damp, particulate heavy air over the North Atlantic can scatter or absorb laser energy, reducing effective range. Technical overreach is another danger. The Ministry of Defense has already faced criticism for overpromising with the Type 26 frigate and Ajax armored vehicle. A similar misstep could turn Dragonfire into another symbol of bureaucratic excess rather than innovation. Politically, funding tensions persist between naval modernization and the needs of the British Army and Royal Air Force. Despite these challenges, the industrial logic remains compelling. The program anchors Britain's defense manufacturing in high-value photonics and advanced electronics, sectors that can sustain domestic employment and export potential. Italy's Leonardo contributes the optical targeting, while MBDA integrates the fire control architecture. Cinetic Q provides the beam combining and power management subsystems, technologies that could later feed into civilian energy and aerospace applications. Dragonfire thus acts not only as a weapon, but as an industrial policy instrument designed to revitalize the British defense economy. For the Indo-Pacific, the implications are far-reaching. As AUKUS expands into its second pillar of advanced technologies, Dragonfire could form the baseline laser defense suite for both Royal Australian Navy destroyers and future AUKUS-class submarines. The system's modularity also allows potential export of scaled-down versions to smaller partners, such as Singapore or the Philippines, offering them cost-effective defense against drone incursions. For Southeast Asian states facing maritime coercion, the British approach, prioritizing energy-based defense over traditional missile stockpiles, may serve as a model of strategic adaptation. The philosophical dimension is equally important. For centuries, Britain's naval power rested on gunpowder, steel, and industrial might. Today, it rests on data, light, and microchips. Dragonfire embodies the transition from mechanical to digital deterrence, from cost to concept. If successful, the weapon could redefine naval defense doctrine. Unlimited shots, limited only by energy capacity, zero explosive storage risk, and near instant reaction time. In a world where hypersonic missiles compress engagement windows to seconds, lasers restore time as a strategic asset. Nevertheless, failure would carry heavy consequences. Should the program stall or underperform, it could erode confidence in the Royal Navy's modernization drive and weaken Britain's credibility within AUKUS. The stakes, therefore, extend beyond one weapon, 
They touch the question of whether post-Brexit Britain can still lead in advanced defense innovation, or whether it will remain a junior partner dependent on American and European systems. By 2030, the Royal Navy aims to field its first operational laser destroyer. If it succeeds, Dragonfire will not merely defend ships, it will defend an idea that technological audacity can still compensate for numerical inferiority. The system's blinding white beam will mark more than a tactical revolution. It will signal the United Kingdom's return as a maritime innovator. The contest among the world's great navies will no longer hinge solely on who commands the oceans, but on who commands the light that cuts across them.